Are you involved in prescribing variable rate intravenous insulin infusion? This is a brief illustration to help you understand what is meant by VRIII, when should it be used, which insulins to continue or stop while using it, which fluids to be prescribed with it, and how to stop it safely. VRIII stands for Variable Rate Intravenous Insulin Infusion. The old term for it was Sliding Scale Insulin Infusion. It simply means that the rate of IV insulin infusion will vary according to the blood glucose levels. And as we give IV insulin, the blood glucose levels can fluctuate. It means that Monitoring of blood glucose is necessary every hour through a finger prick check. This ensures that the target blood glucose levels are maintained while someone is on variable rate IV insulin. In ITU setting, this can be a bit strict between 6 and 10 millimoles per liter, but for ward based setting, it can range between 4 and 12 millimoles per liter. This brings the second point. When should we be using variable rate IV insulin? Whenever there is a need for rapid correction of hyperglycemia, variable rate IV insulin infusion can be used, especially when the patient is nil by mouth, or the patient is vomiting, or the patient is too unwell to eat or drink normally. The idea is to bring down the high glucose within target range and keep it maintained. Now there can be special circumstances when rapid drop in glucose is required despite the fact that the patient is able to eat and drink. Variable rate IV insulin can be used to rapidly correct glucose when someone has got acute coronary syndrome, someone who is pregnant and they have got high glucose someone who is on high dose steroid therapy or they are on enteral feeds or they have acute stroke and they require rapid correction of their glucose. Now variable rate intravenous insulin infusion is constituted by using an insulin called Actropid. This is a fast acting insulin. Majority of these patients who receive variable rate intravenous insulin infusion may already have known diabetes and they may already be using some other type of insulins. So it is extremely important to know the type and the timing of their usual insulin. This brings the next question. Which insulins can be continued with variable rate intravenous insulin infusions and which ones have to be stopped? All rapid acting insulins have to be stopped when someone has been commenced on variable rate intravenous insulin infusion. Some of the common names are Actropid, Novorapid, Fiasp, Neumolog, Epidra. Sometimes it may be in mixed form like no mix 30 or 50, Neumolog mix 25 or mix 50 or Humulin M3. If a patient is already taking one of these insulins, make sure they have been held off whilst the patient is having VRIII. If someone is already on a long-acting insulin, which is also called background insulin, this must be carried on with the variable rate intravenous insulin infusion. Some of the names are Lantus, Tojeo, Ebezoglar, Semgli, Traceba, Levimir, or Humulin I. These insulins should not be stopped whenever a patient is started on VRIII. When someone is receiving IV insulin, their glucose is likely to drop. So they need to have a maintenance fluid to keep their glucose levels in normal range. This is called the substrate fluid. So our next point is, which fluid should be used as a substrate fluid with VRIII? It can be any fluid which has enough glucose and potassium in it to maintain the glucose within normal range without causing the potassium to go too low. The standard fluid regime to be used alongside variable rate IV insulin is 0.45% sodium chloride plus 5% glucose plus 
0.3% potassium chloride. This has to run at 125 milliliter per hour. As an alternative to this fluid, 5% glucose plus 40 millimoles of potassium chloride can also be given. There are certain special requirements when the fluid and electrolyte disturbances do not allow the use of standard regime. For example, someone who has renal impairment, someone who is a dialysis patient, someone who has got fluid overload, or someone who has already got electrolyte disturbances. Please contact the specialist teams to ensure the correct fluid regime is prescribed while using PRIII. And now the final step, how to stop VRIII. Variable rate intravenous insulin infusion needs to carry on until hyperglycemia has been controlled and target glucose has been maintained and sustained over a period of few hours. Your patient has started to eat and drink normally and they have been recommenced on their usual diabetes regime, which may include insulin. If these three targets are achieved, that the hyperglycemia has been controlled, your patient has started to eat and drink normally, and they can be restarted on their usual diabetes medications, you can safely say that they're ready to come off the variable rate IV insulin. When they're ready, just follow the three simple principles. Avoid stopping variable rate IV insulin overnight because of risk of lengthy period of fasting. Wait till a meal time. Give them their usual rapid acting insulin before the meal and stop the variable rate IV insulin after 60 minutes. This concludes the five step illustration about variable rate IV insulin.